everything you need to know. He is so well versed. He's a lot of fun, uh, very humorous. Um, he loves to help people. And um, he is a triple diamond black pearl in the company. He has made over $3 million. So he's a part of the Millionaires Club. So we are very privileged to uh, welcome our guest speaker all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, please, everybody stand. This gentleman is so dynamic and phenomenal. Everybody, please stand as you bring up Mr. Barry. together. Mm -hmm. I said that right? Exactly. And I think that's a brilliant, brilliant uh, theme for a team. Who think that's a brilliant team? Yeah. <laughs> right. So please give it up again for Ms. Carol. <laughs> now, I got to share something with you. I'm very, very impressed. I know the weather and how the weather is here in Detroit. And I'm looking at your faces. And I'm going to share something with you. If, you, if I may. Is it okay? Yeah. Yes. You know what I found out? The success, right, is that success don't wait for people. See, it doesn't. If you're not there where you're supposed to be, it is gone. Who knows what I'm talking about? Right. If the airlines ran on people's schedule, wouldn't nobody make a flight? <laughs> Am I making any sense in my room? I'm sharing something with you. The world has clocks and stuff for a reason, right? And what I found is the people, there are people from all the way from Ohio and from New York, and then there are people that have 15 minutes across town that couldn't get here. And then y'all I don't know nothing about the snow. Y'all been dealing with this all y'all life. Y'all not <laughs> I'm from Georgia. We get two inches of snow. We shut the whole dog on city down. <laughs> so, I, so guess what I'm saying is that you guys need a round of applause for being here and not making any excuses and doing what you had to do here. Give us a round of applause. Because in my mind, that's a mandatory requirement. In Atlanta, we lock the door. We lock, we lock the door. Guess how many times people have to get locked out in the meeting? One time. Because the thing is, you can't make people who are on time be punished by waiting for people that were late. Does that make sense to anybody here? Yes. That's got to make sense. So what I'm going to ask is in Detroit, I think y'all should set that precedent. Don't punish people who are on time for people that are late. It should be the other way. Right? Because that's what the rest of the world does. The plane does not sit there waiting. Oh, is, is, is Bear here? Oh, he's not here. We're going to have to sit here waiting. Y'all know y'all just be patient. That ain't going to never happen. Am I making any sense? Yes. So now that my little chest ties is all the way, right? Let me kind of get to why I'm here to talk about. I kind of said a lot of really nice things about me, but there's some friends in this audience that I've been friends with for a long time. And the friends that are really close to me, they know what the motivation was for my getting started in this business. Who knows what my motivation was for getting this business? Yeah. Just, say, just say it out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody. everybody knows my daughter. My daughter's like the original known child, right? So all the financial success and all that other stuff was a byproduct of trying to help my little girl. Dad, what would you do to help your little girl? Anything, mom, what you do to help a little girl? So I don't know why they give me all these accolades. I mean, what I did is what anybody would do in, in, in my particular situation. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. Now, I'm not going to sit here and get all of the details because last time I broke down like a little girl and, and, and started crying, right? But it was a real traumatic experience I had with my little girl. I didn't think she was going to make it, right? And this product, this phenomenal product, I believe it saved her life. And after that, you know, it, to me, it was just a wrap. I, everybody had to hear about it. Because I feel like it would never, you should never outlive your children. I'm saying to you, your children, you know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. You know, so your children should be around long after we're gone. And I felt like that wouldn't have happened if not for this product. So I'm very, 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 very thankful for this company and the people that put this together to allow me to get it to my daughter and I believe to save her life. Right? I wish I could see her now, right? I got some video over here, but I wish I could see her now because now it's completely different. Am I making sense? So anyway, so keep that in mind as we talk about what we're talking about today, right? Now I'm going to just jump right into this, right? Because 
there are some people that I want you guys to meet that are you really here to hear about, right? From, uh, from Mr. Todd, Badly, and another friend of his name, Jeff, with the True Scanner, right? So let me try to get to my part. Who's ever been to a movie or saw one of these movies before? Anybody here? All right, everybody's hands out of y'all. A lot of y'all have not seen Titanic yet? Who's seen Titanic? Yeah. All right, pretty much everybody. What about Avatar? Anybody who's seen Avatar? Now let me ask you something, right? Were these very good movies? Yes. Yeah, did you recommend these movies to maybe some people that you know? Yeah. Now here's the big question. When you recommend these movies, look how much money that they gross. Did you know that your recommendation, which may have caused somebody to go see this money, contributed to Avatar being the biggest movie in the history of movies? Two billion seven hundred eighty-two million dollars. Don't you think that if they would have paid you, you would have probably recommended that movie more? <laughs> yeah, about now. You would have been downtown Detroit, like you need to go see Avatar. Did you see Avatar? You tell Barry you need to go see Avatar, right? See, ladies, do you recommend maybe your beautician to people? Yeah, have your beautician ever cut you a check? No. Fellas, maybe you recommend your barber or something. Have you ever received any no. uh, funds for doing it? No. So what about restaurants? You know, I know the men are really good at recommending restaurants, right? Yeah. The restaurant ever seen you money back? No. They didn't even give you a discount on your meal. No. No. See, when people say they can't do this business, they've been doing it their whole life. They just haven't been getting compensated. All we do is recommend a product that people may not know about, and if they choose to use it, you get reward for that. Now, who thinks that makes a lot of sense? All right, so here we go. Here's the question. If you can help someone you love have better health and live longer without any harm side effects, would you do so? Say, I'm sure hands. Now, if your hand ain't up, you mean you wouldn't help somebody that you just let them die? Yes. <laughs> would you help somebody? Yes. yes. Now, would you do that even if you do it for free? Yes. yes. So my point is, doesn't it just make sense to do something and get compensated for it because you've been doing it anyway? That's the gist of our business. That's the business model right there. Don't make it any more complicated than that. We don't sell stuff. We just kind of share our stories with people. Does that make sense? Yes. And if they choose to try it, then that's good. Guess what? This is America. You have the right to be in pain if you want to. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Desert Storm. I'm over there fault for you to be here in pain if you want to. Who's ever heard the story about the dog on the nail? Anybody know what I'm talking about? The dog was just making all this sound and just, you know, hollering. And the guy was like, what's wrong with the dog? Well, he's laying on the nail. Well, why would he get up? Well, it's just easy for him to lay on that nail and yell and, and moan than it is to get up. Some people just want to lay on the nail. And there ain't nothing we can do about that. This is America. They have a right to lay on the nail. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Now, did you guys know that there were two ages before two ages? Did anybody really know that there were two ages? I didn't, right? There's one that's called your chronological age or the one that's on your driver's license. Everybody knows that one. Though. Yeah, but did you know that we had another one called your biological age? We call this the true age, right? Now, this true age is something to me that, you know, a lot of people know, I was talking to a good friend of mine that you're going to hear from later, and he got a good friend of mine he said, right? he's in the insurance business. He said that the insurance business have known about the biological age and when people are going to die for many, many, many years. Are you with me? Because, so the point I'm trying to make is, even though it's new to us, the people who've been trying to capitalize on it, they've always known about it. Am I making any sense? I'll share, I'll share this with you, right? That there have been uh, the pharmaceutical companies, they've been trying to come up with a solution for this true age problem for many, many years. And they've been so unsuccessful at it that many, many people have died in the attempt of them creating something, a pill, to help us with this. Because I want you to think about this. Just, just, just wrap your head around this, right? Since the beginning of man, we've been trying to live on it. Am I telling the truth? Yes. The Holy Grail, do I need to go down all the movies to surround the people who try to extend their life? What if they came up with a pill that would extend somebody's life? Who, who think they would buy that? See, we kind of feel like we have that, right? We kind of feel like we have that, and the thing is, we didn't have to create anything. Nature created it. Am I making any sense? So I think that God provides a solution for every problem that's out there, but we have to be smart enough to find it. Am I making any sense? And I think that's what happened when it comes to this true age thing, right? So let me ask you a question. Who in here wants to know their true age? Oh, y'all, everybody got their hand. All right, so let me show you. <coughs> this this age portion of true age, right? It's something that can identify what they call the end of life marker. And the end of life marker sounds like something you really, really want to be dealing with. It's the end of life marker. Am I making any sense? So now, this device has been used. It's proprietary. It's owned. It's copyrighted. And right now, there are only two in the world. 
On these two are on tour, and guess what? There's one in Detroit right now. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, here's the thing about this end of life marker. This end of life marker has been shown to be the root of just about <coughs> every other ailment that's out there. Are you, am I making any sense? If you got diabetes, it probably has something to do with this end of life marker. People with heart disease, it's probably got something to do with this end of life marker. If you can get this thing under control and fixed, it pretty much will help you fix all these other things. Who think that that is very, very important? <laughs> right? So when people, here's the thing about the end of life marker. If the end of life marker gets too high, you die. Mm. It's kind of like your expiration date. Are y'all ain't feeling it? Now, if you knew your expiration date and you had the opportunity to push that back, come on now. Who's going to push that expiration date back? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep pushing it back. <laughs> so, look, so here's my point. This don't require no rocket science. This is something that, to me, this is just common sense to me. But the thing about common sense is, common sense is not common. Everybody don't have it. Am I making sense? And people do not know about trade in the end of life market. Hey, hey, clue, clue. If everybody knows about your science and your product, all the money is gone. You can't come here talking about I got the greatest eight track tape deck to the <laughs> We're on Blu-ray right now. <laughs> I'm making sense. So I believe that this right here is kind of like having Blu-ray when everybody else is thinking about eight track tape deck. We saw ahead of the curve that they don't even know we're out there right now. But that's a great opportunity for us. I have not been as excited since I got involved in this company. It's completely changed. You would think that I have made a dime since I heard about this premature age thing because I have been losing a lot of sleep. You know, I tell people, you can sleep when you're dead and rest. Yeah. But with this right here, it's going to be a long time. I'm, <laughs> I'm pushing that, I'm pushing that in like Marga back. Who will push that in back? Raise your hand, who will push it back? <laughs> so, here we go, right? So now let me ask this question again. Knowing that this marker could determine when you expire, who now wants to know their end of life market? Because now you got time to do something about it. What if my, my mom passed in 2010. What if I would have knew that she was getting close to her end of life market and I could have did something about that to extend her life another 10 years? How much do you think I would have spent for that? Come on now, how much do you think I would have spent? Whatever it took, I would have spent. Everybody has that experience in their life. There was somebody that we wish we would have known back then what we know now. Am I being honest with you guys? Yeah. So, so my point is, this is very, this might be one of the most important questions to ever ask anybody. Who wants to know that you're right? It's something that you need to know because you've got some time to do something about it once you know about it. One of the things that just blows my mind about this business, right, is that all these years I've been juicing and eating salads and eating raw fruit and, and guzzling this stuff like this stuff is Kool-Aid the way I drink it, right? And I've been guzzling stuff, and this is, this is Max in water, just so you know, right? And, and the thing I'm trying to share with you is this. I didn't really have a gauge to know if it was really, really working. I felt great. I thought I looked great, you know, in my own humble opinion. But I didn't really have no way. <laughs> Listen here, 
I got something that might can fix you for about another 12 years, but it's gonna cost you. You gonna make some phone calls. Who gonna make some phone calls? <laughs> Look on the house, say I calls, I can get another 12 years, get rid of everything. I can get that back in maybe four or five years. I have another six, seven in joint. Am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. On the extreme end, they increase your life for about another 17 years. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, once this hit me, it didn't hit me when I first heard about it. It didn't even hit me when I was in New York. It didn't hit me until Dad Hill, the equivalent of, of Todd back there, until Dad came to Atlanta. When it came to Atlanta, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was running. A scalded dog on crack. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about what it is that we're doing. Am I making sense? Yes. So now, this product right here, we haven't even tested it to the degree that we have the max. This is three times more potent than this. So in my mind, I'm saying, well, if this will get you 12, what might that one get you? <laughs> This is a hundred dollars a bottle. A hundred dollars a bottle to give me 36 years, I think, I think people would be killing each other trying to get their hands off. But this bottle can make three of these bottles. So this was about $55, right? This is a hundred dollars. If you add still water to this one, you can make three bottles of this. That might make sense. But I've been drinking that. Right? Now this is kind of thick, it kind of tastes like syrup. But but let me help you out. Something happened to, the, to this age that we're in right now. Because the way that people are acting now is not how you grew up. Can I take you back to how you grew up? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if your mama made you take casserole. Come on now. Yeah. Who, who mama used to sprinkle a little sugar on it? Yeah. My mama used to put a little sugar on it. Y'all just got it straight. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got it straight. Who remember Mercure Cup? Yeah. Oh man, somebody is still in their age right now. Yeah. It was Mercure Cup, it was red, it was put, I mean, everybody knew you'd been in something. Because had all these red marks on you from this yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Then, who remember the, the liquid penicillin that used to come in a bottle? It was, it's like penicillin, but it was in a bottle. That stuff tastes like crack. <laughs> I'm not with you. See, back then, we didn't care about taste, because we were trying to get what? Yeah. We were trying to get well, so not everybody wanted everything to taste. It's got it's to work like known it tastes like Kool-Aid. Right. Not anything to tell you. Not if you're dying. If you're dying, you don't care if it tastes like mud. Right. You can be like, look, I'm just going to have to get enough down to get me up out of this bed. Who, who can feel me on that? So, so I'm sharing something with you. This is not a, 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 a business of convenience, but this is a business of results. Right. And from a results standpoint, I bet this stuff tastes great. I'm going to be honest with you. But the point is that it ain't the best taste for everybody. But then we do have another product that we call mango that tastes like Kool-Aid. But it is not the one that's been shown to do this. I'm not making any sense. To get the same equivalent results of this, it's got 30 iridos. You gotta drink like four times the amount. I'm not making any sense. But there are people out there where taste is more important than life. Yes, believe it or not. Right? So in that case, we'll argue with them the man. Keep them some of the mango. Just tell them to drink three or four bottles a week. I'll come through and make your check go all right. <laughs> so anyway. So look, this AGE portion of what we do, it helps. this right here, this is everything that I just talked about, it's just this one block. Look what else you get in addition to just this one thing. Come on now, y'all acting like I'm all my sins. Can y'all see this? Yeah. yeah. Right? If you get your cholesterol under control, increase your brain. Come on now, who played with some people like that that need to increase some brain? <laughs> You say, no, I didn't give them praise, I didn't give them max. <laughs> so, so my point is, right, in addition to everything that I just talked about, you get all these extras. I have never seen anything like this. The owner of this company, he said, if we knew back when Noni was introduced, what we know now, this would have been a product that we don't have to come with. And when I think about what Noni has done for me and my family and a lot of you people in this room, and the fact that this stuff is for three times more potent, I, I can't even wrap my head around three times more results than I've already gotten this company. I feel so completely blessed and humbled by what has happened to me. <coughs> Sometimes I can't even believe that it happened to me. I really can't. But then I say, well, I can't think of a better person for it to happen to, so. <laughs> 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 it kind of snapped me back in reality, right? <laughs> now, so in this example, this one product helps take care of a lot of these issues that people are dealing with. You can't guarantee that it's going to work. Well, I'll tell you what, I have never seen an instance where a person who's drunk it enough of it, long enough, that they have not got some kind of positive benefit. Who in here can testify to that? Right? So, here we go. And it's listed in the position
physician's desk reference, physician's desk reference, so the PDR, this is the 2013 edition. It is one of the few companies out there that has this kind of credibility, which means doctors can now prescribe this. Who thinks that's a big feather in our cap? People can come up to me all the time and say, you ever heard about this super tea? I say, really? Well, what page is it in, in PDR? Because no, I don't see it in here. You done heard about, you know, Dango? No, I don't see that in here either. Oh, you, you never heard about Wannabe? No, I don't see Wannabe in here either. What about uh, Mackay? I don't see Mackay in here either. What about uh, uh, Marimba? I don't see Marimba in here either. Do I need to keep going? Yeah, yeah, once they get in here, you come back and we can talk. <laughs> they ain't gonna have it, I'm just saying, I don't see it in here. If it ain't in here, I ain't thinking about trying it right now. Once y'all get enough documentation to make it in this book, then I come back and talk. Because everybody wants to compare something to something. Am I making sense? Here's really what went down. When we came out with this product, there was no such talk of exotic superfruit. Am I right, Phil? Because Phil was there, right? There was no such talk of exotic superfruit. But then when they saw the kind of money that it was making, everybody started coming out of the woodwork with some kind of juice. We got super juice, super tea, super coffee. They're going to have super juice <laughs> pretty soon. You're going to be drunk in here. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm like, baby, it's the same water. No, it's not. It came from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, baby, I didn't get it out the toilet. I got it out the sink. <laughs> anyway, right? So, so I don't know what is happening, right? But what I'm trying to share with you is this. If you can sit here and internalize these things that are just really common sense things, you can understand why this may be the biggest opportunity since the history of the word opportunity, the way that I see it. Am I making sense? Now, can I share a plan with you? Can I share a plan with you? You need to walk out of here with a plan. Here's the plan, right? We're about to launch a global AGE awareness campaign. It's already in the works. Are you with me? Not to hear like that if you're with us. Yeah. All right. All right. So now, the whole purpose is to get people aware of, of the end of life marker, to get people aware of the credibility that, that this product and this device that we're talking about, right? <coughs> so they can have companies in our studies, and, and we're going to have a bunch of spokespeople to increase consumption. Am I making any sense? Yes. And the way that we're going to do this is like this. We're going to have a huge online campaign. You're going to see it all over Facebook. Everybody's going to be tweeting. Instagram, all this stuff that all the kids are doing that we're still trying to figure out, all of them are going to be doing this stuff. Are you with me? Yeah. Then we're going to have it in all kind of print media, right? The Wall Street Journal and all these different magazines and publications that a lot of people read. But the one that I think is going to have the biggest effect on people is this one right here, when it hits television. I don't know what it is about television. You can tell people that the sky's falling and they'll start buying steel umbrellas if you put it on TV. <laughs> All right, I might have gone some people here. Hey. <laughs> but anyway, once this thing hits television, I'm going to share something with you, right? You don't want to be in your house, sitting on TV, thinking about, let me call Barry or Carol or somebody, let me get started with this thing. You want to already be positioned in this thing with people in place so they can see it on TV when you're sitting. Am I making sense to anybody in this room? Can I share some true stories with you? One of my best friends is a guy named Leroy Brooks. Now, since he's not here, y'all don't know him. We're going to kind of talk about him a little bit, right? <laughs> now, I love him. We've been friends since we were four years old. So when I got introduced to the original beverage, which we call Tahitian Only Juice, right? He was one of the first people that I told about this. I said, Leroy, man, this is going to be the biggest thing I've ever been involved in. Right? And at the time, you know, my friends kind of admired me because I had made some good decisions, right, business-wise. Right? He couldn't see it. He could not see it, right? So he said, listen, when you make some money, let me know. I did not tell him about my financial success until I bought the house that I live in now. He came in my house cussing at the door. <laughs> he was like, Dad! concert or something, you go get your hat on, go get your dress, some new shoes, might have a tag still in there, you know. So you <laughs> 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 you right? When you knock down 299, you won't even think about it. But when you wrap it up like a business, if I tell you that you can get a job as an executive in a company, but, but you got to get 299 and get your briefcase, help me out somebody, 299 and get your suit, 299, you'll get that stuff in a minute. If I said that this was a, a job to where we would pay 50, 60, 70,000, dollars a year, Applications are being accepted now. It will be a line of people oh, yeah. butt naked in the snow <laughs> trying to get in here and get a job. But as soon as you wrap it up into a business opportunity, now you want to sit here and question everything. Yeah. And guess what? Can I keep it real? Yes. We ain't got time for those people right now. If they sneeze the wrong way on this true age deal, because look at our track record, it ain't like we experiment on this. We've done this before. If they sneeze, you just step right over them until you find somebody that sees this thing the way that you see it. Right. Right. Am I making any sense? Right. Because I'm going to tell you something that Ted Turner said to me one time. He said, Barry, I would rather run with five than drag a thou. When I think about how much time I wasted in my original lonely days trying to convince somebody to improve their health and make some money when it was six a dog and dead broke, they should have been outside butt naked begging me to put them in this company. Right. I said, I will never do that again. 
I say, what I'll do, because see, this is a war, whether you know it or not. Yeah. This is a war, and the enemy is poverty. Mm -hmm. yeah. And poverty don't rest, it don't take no sleep, it don't, oh, yeah, I'm not making sense. Mm -hmm. And in the war of poverty, on the battlefield of poverty, guess what? You don't have no funerals on the battlefield. Really? Or you gonna catch a bullet to the head while you're sitting there trying to dig a ditch with somebody. You got to win the war and come back and do what? Yeah. Bury the dead. Mm -hmm. And some of your friends, you're going to have to come back and catch them later. No. All right, okay. Right. That's right. All right. I'm, 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 that's all my soapbox for the day right there. Because the rest of it is just straight facts, right? We're going to have all these different spokespeople, people that a lot of people that I don't even know. But everybody knows this guy right here. I don't know what it is about this guy. Who is this right here? I don't know what it is about this dude. But if you came up with some little elixir or pill or chewing gum or something, and you got Dr. Oz to endorse it, Go ahead and take the rest of your life off. <laughs> it is a wrap. And we've already negotiated the fact that we're going to be working with him. Look at how he's looking at this dog on product. He knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Once Dr. Oz sits on television, puts his arm in that true age scam, every doctor that's on the show is going to want one. And they can only get it from us. They can't buy it from the company. They have to get it through us. Oh, man, that's gonna be a wrap. And then right next to the scanners, to lower your trades, it's going to be the product. Scan by. Scan by. Come on, somebody. Scan by. 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 I see this thing, guys. I see it, right? Because guess what? What do they put the blood pressure machines? Right next to the pharmacist. They shock you, scare you down. You right over there. You do the same thing. You know, not really make a side of this, right? So here we go. You can either you can either be a part of this or watch it on television because it will be broadcast. I'm not going to say Now, a lot of people don't know this, but we have a lot of lifestyle centers around the world. There's one in Queens, New York. So as we roll in these scanners up, because right now they're manufacturing literally thousands of them right now, right? And as we roll in these things out, one of the first places that they're going to be is in our lifestyle centers, right? So now, there's like the one in Queens, New York. In, in, in my mind, I can imagine this thing hitting Dr. Oz, and he's saying, well, there's one located in Queens, New York at this address. And I can just see all these people in New York going down there, getting in line, waiting to get scanned. And you, your eyes, if everything is happening, cha-ching, cha-ching, and just cha-ching. <laughs> 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 line up, hand you your money. Because the benefit of what they're doing is more valuable than the money that they're spending. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So that's how you get people to take action. You have to create value. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. And in this case, your life, what's more valuable than your life? I can sit up here and say, look, I'll cut you a check right now for 50 grand. And it will bounce. Will not bounce. Come on, Harris. Mm -hmm. Will 50 grand check bounce? No. Nope. She, she knows that. What about a $100 check? It won't bounce. She knows for a fact. I'll cut you a check for 100 grand. But what about I said I got to take one of your eyes? So come up here and get 100 grand. Woo! Take your eye. Easy check you ever made. Is your eye more valuable to you than $100,000? Really? So my point is you got to learn to create value. In this case, I can't think of anything that's more valuable than a life. <coughs> am, I, am, I, am I reaching anybody here? Yeah. So here we go, right? Then it's going to hit the doctor's offices, right? You might go to your doctor and I said, did you see that true age scanner that was on Dr. Oz? Yeah, man. I, he said, do you know that I'm one of the representatives that market those? Mm. What? Really? You want to get one or two? <laughs> right? Then after that, we'll see Walmart and CVS and, and when people just walk in and sure ain't scanning here, Max right here. And you were the person that did that. I mean, just go ahead and get prepared to take the rest of your life off, right? So anyway, I'm, I'm really, really excited about this day. So here we go. This is kind of the plan right now where the true age scanners are going right now. Uh, Todd, Mr. Todd Badley, he's going to give you the details and locations and dates that are going to be there. But understand, if you got friends in any one of these locations, you need to start calling them now. I, I got, I got to get my head off of Carol. Right? Carol got on the phone and talked to what's my friend name again? Yeah. No, no one in here yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. And told Nolan, Nolan was supposed to come back next week. What did she say, Nolan? <clears throat> Said you better get ahead this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because guess what? What if you don't have another week to wait? All right. <laughs> that man changed his flight from whatever he had to do, and he got here. Now he is right here. Y'all get him to Nolan real quick. As this thing starts spreading around the country, 
You want to already have people scheduled to go get scans. Am I making sense? What you do? Yeah. Oh, let me back that up. What's your true age? Not true age, but 15. How much? She's 67, her true age is 15. Now, I was there. I recorded this with my cell phone, right? I'll tell you about it. Look and see what our mobile team will be here. Find out your AGE number with our true age scanner. You can better manage them by monitoring them. Regulax has actually been proven in clinical trials to reduce AGE levels by 24% in just four weeks. Now, I think that to reduce or increase my life expectancy, that big of a percentage in four weeks, in my mind, is, is mind-boggling. I don't really, I can't even wrap my head around it. But see, I don't have to know how it works. I just need to know what? That it works. See, I don't know how my transmission works. I don't know how the gears and stuff all go. I just put the thing in deep and drop. I got a Bentley. I don't know how that stuff works in that car. I just put the thing in deep. Who can put it in deep? Hey, get, out, get the check and figure it out later. Am, am I making any sense to anybody? Sometimes we want to analyze and break it down to the nth degree, and all the, everybody else is out just getting paid. We're still there sitting there studying. Sometimes you just got to take it on faith that some things are, are, are out there and people ain't trying to get over on it. And this is one of those comments. Am I making sense? Well, they always under-promise and over-deliver. Am I making sense? Who's experienced that since they've been in this conference? Now, is there anybody in here that might want to share their true age testimony with anybody here? Ain't nobody want to share their true age? Oh, here. Well, I ain't asking no women because that means you got to tell your age. Oh, really? Wow, okay. Well, this pretty lady with the hat on then. You mind standing up? Tell us your name. I did it today. I'm a guest of Carolyn and I'm Carl Leroy, and I'm 62 years old. And my true age is 43. Oh, wow. Here we go, right? Somebody jumped up. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, took mine this morning when I got here. Now I'm in my 60s here, and my true age was uh, 30. Oh. 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 We got one more. We got time for one more. Right here. No, 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 no. To just share this, this story. What about a, what about a teaching only use testimony? Anybody here with a powerful teaching only use testimony? Anybody? Don't all raise your hands. Right here on the edge. I have one about my mother. Okay. My mother was 89 years old. She had major back surgery August 24th. Mm -hmm. She's been in the facility ever since. She came home today. She went not eat since November 11th, and she's been in her four hours ago. Wow. She's coming home. Wow, now that makes sense. I can relate to that. Right? You know, when my mom was in the hospital, they uh, you know, they were told that she was allergic to morphine. But I don't know if you know about hospitals, a lot of nurses, they're not permanent, they just kind of have to move from hospital to hospital. And, and they gave her morphine and they put her in a coma. Right? Ooh. And so what I did was, and I'm just confessing, I, I took some uh, pure, and I put pure in her water too. And she woke up the next day. Her blood, her, her uh, what's the number that I'm looking for? What's her blood pressure? Help me out, somebody. AC. I can't remember. It was, it was way, it was way, it was like 400 and something. Where it should have been like 200 and something. Her sugar. Yeah, her sugar. 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 Her sugar level was a point to where it, it had her in coma, right? Because the morphine shot it up. And I'm telling you, in the time that it took for her body to process that pure, it was back down to normal. They were, they was, they was amazed. I just sitting there like. It had nothing to do with the product, but everything to do with the business. I moved into the hospital. Ask anybody that knows me. I brought my laptop, my printer, all my, my iPad. I moved in there. I kept a log book of every freaking thing they gave her, who gave it to her, what time they gave it. And then my sisters had to come down there and lead the watch, just like I'm now in the military. They had to come down there. I had to say, they gave it this at this time, and this they gave it to her, and make sure that they don't get some more morphine. Because, see, that was just a job, but that was my mom. And I said, you need to make one mistake, and I'd find out about it. And that was a wrap. I watched her the entire time until I made a rainy to get her up out of there. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know how y'all gonna receive that, but that's exactly what happened. That's real. Right? One part I forgot. I did not know that antibiotics were ruining you. Mm. It took her over into dementia. See, they said she was like 35%. They gave me the next readout, they retested her again. They said she's 85% back to normal, but I know she's bossing me. She's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I <like> my mom. <laughs> 
So listen, I, I, the, our product is not on trial. We, got, we, we spent over $250 million. Most companies are trying to make $250 million. That's what we've spent on research. But there's some people in this room who are not raising their hand that I know because I'm looking at their face. Y'all been drinking this product for years and years and years. We know what it does. You can't pry from our hand. Am I making any sense? So now, what I'm going to do, right, is just kind of explain to you this industry that we create. Who knows about the food industry? Raise your hand. Yeah. Who's in the food industry? Raise your hand. Everybody got their hands up. Who ate something sometime today, <laughs> yesterday, or two days ago? Raise your hand. You're in the food industry. You just own the pay end of it. Am I making sense? Who's in the pharmaceutical industry? Raise your hands. Okay, who's ever had an aspirin, some cough syrup, a doggone band-aid? Help me out. <laughs> who's in the pharmaceutical industry? Everybody. You on what end of it? Pain. The pain side of it. We're all in it, right? Now, the thing about the food industry is that a lot of the stuff we eat is modified, processed, synthetic, and it's causing the biggest epidemic of obesity since the word was created. Are you with me? Now, here's the thing that messes me up about the food industry. Why does organic food cost more than this stuff? Because I thought organic made it came from the ground. Where does that stuff come from? <laughs> Am I making any sense? The organic section is through the ceiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to me, right? Right? Now, in the pharmaceutical industry, I don't even have to beat that up. Y'all, everybody knows about what's going on there. Drug recall, people are dying. I got a, I got a video here that I'm not going to play of a commercial where the side effects is three times longer than the benefits. Portion of the commercial. Who's ever seen one of those? Yeah. Yet we keep getting prescribed though. And it ain't about us getting better, it's about the relationship between that pharmaceutical salesperson and the doctor that's prescribing. If I'm lying, somebody stop me. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are, we create this bioactive industry, and all you have to know about it is that our products have multiple benefits, or both, right? No harm or side effects that are caused by both of these. It's more cost effective. We created an own this space. We patented the product and now this can, right? We own 100% of this market. This is how we were when we launched No. It was a super fruit industry. Who remembers this? It was a super fruit industry, an exotic beverage, beverage industry. We were the only company in it. We had 100% of anybody that was trying an exotic super fruit juice. Then everybody started coming up. Are you what? See, you only have the opportunity to have 100% once. There was a time that AT&T had 100% of everybody. Mm -hmm. Who remember the rotary phone? Raise your hand. <laughs> Dial 919. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. This is our home office, right? We don't have a suite somewhere in a building next to 20 dozen other companies. We got a dog on campus. And right down the street, I mean, this is just credibility things that I'm talking about. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Right? Over five million dollars in sale. I'm gonna tell you something. Someone else, Ted Turner, said to me when we had lunch. He gave us 14 minutes for lunch, and I was with his son. He gave his son 14 minutes. Anyway, that's how busy he is, right? He said, uh, "Anytime you want to know how effective something is, follow the money. The money don't ever lie." I don't know. I, I just remember that. Five million dollars. If this stuff being moved, it's got to be doing something. Or nobody would keep purchasing. It. Does that make sense? Yes. So, uh, anyway. These are all the countries that we're currently in. Now here's the part that you need to get really, really excited about, right? We're only marketing this product right now in the United States. The True Age scam is only in these locations that Todd never taken it to. Am I making any sense? Yeah. So the point is, is you have the opportunity to take it to all these other places, right? <coughs> and we're already there. They're just waiting for the product and the scam. Come on now, am I reaching anybody in here? Yeah. Okay, can I, can I use a personal example? Is that okay? Yeah. okay? I told a guy named Andre Parker about this business. We told a guy named Jabari Butler about this business. We told a lady named Lolo. And Lolo took this product over to Nigeria. At the time, Noni was selling on the black market for $100 a bottle because AIDS was so rampant over there. And this is a product that really helps with AIDS. It was $100 a bottle. When Nola and them got this product in Nigeria the legal way, it, it went to the freaking seal. I'm telling you, it just, it just it blew my mind. Nola flew back to the United States. We had a, a super Saturday back when we had the, the Lifestyle Center in Atlanta. She flew back over here from Nigeria, bought her Mercedes Benz cash, had it shipped back to Nigeria. She had to pay for it twice. Because, y'all know what I'm talking about? She had to pay for it twice because she had to pay what when she got back home? She had to pay duty on it. 
it blew my mind how many how money just went through. Look, you sit here talking about being the one excited about introducing it to your city. What do you start taking this stuff to other companies? It goes to the doggone silver. Am I making any sense? So now, you have the ability to be in 91 different locations right now because we're already there. Am I making sense? So this is a worldwide opportunity that you get started, right? Now, we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk about the money. Is that okay? Yes. Now, the thing is, people have kind of different uh, opinions about money. Some people say that money is the root of all evil, but what, the book, what does the book really say? The love of money. But I think it's the lack of money that made me. When I was mad, it was easy to call that lack of money. I think most people that are robbing banks and stuff are people who try to get money. They ain't robbing them to put money in the bank. Am I making any sense to anybody here? See, the thing about money is most people have a kind of negative association with money. Am I making any sense? Well, let me kind of clarify, right? If the way that people talk about money, if they talk about their spouse that way, their spouse will leave. If you said my spouse is the root of all evil, <laughs> y'all ain't going there. This is funny, man. I'll tell you. He said, my boyfriend, he's the root of all evil. Well, why you want him? You gotta talk about money the way you want somebody to, to stay around you. This is the best, best thing that ever happened to me. You just can't let it control you. See, the book says, and the way that I read it is, you need to be in control of it, not to let it control you. And when I was, I mean, when I was broke, it controlled me. It controlled what time I got up. Help me out. It controlled when I got hungry. I went hungry at 12. I was hungry at 11, but I couldn't take my lunch break at 12 because I had a dog on top. And I had to be on hungry at 1. Oh, y'all ain't know Right? So my point is, we got to make sure that we understand that the thing about money is this. If you don't like it, you can always give it away. And the thing about being rich, Guess what? You can always go back to being broke if you don't like rich. I say get rich a try. I'll give wealth a try. I don't really like to use that word wealth because it's, it's a mindset thing. Am I making sense? So I'm going to talk about most people's favorite radio station. It's called WIIFF, which stands for What's In It For Me. Be honest, you hear about What's In It For Me. Everybody got their hands, right? The thing is, if, I often take, if you went out by your car and there was a $100 bill laying down by your car and there was mud all over it and snow and all this kind of stuff, what you gonna do? Yeah. That's right, dry it off, clean it up. So there's some huge business advantages when it comes to a business like this. I'm not gonna really get into the details of them, but no, the biggest tax break you can have is having your own business. Are you with me? My, my entire right of my, my basement is about 3,800 square feet. And I'm telling you about 2,000 of it is my office. My office was huge. Are y'all with me? And I'm not, again, I hope you don't sound like I'm flexing because I'm not. Y'all know, know what I'm trying to say. That portion of my house, I can write off everything associated with it. The water that goes there, y'all said, the lighting associated with it, the security, my dog, I write off my dog. My dog is secure. She barking everything that moves. And I have to feed her. <laughs> so, so my point is, these are the kind of things that you need to be thinking about if you're going to be a business-minded person, right? Most people have what I call a W-2 mentality, but we're looking for people that have a 1099 mentality. Am I making any sense? All right? So here we go. There are 10 ways that we earn money. How many ways do you earn money at your job? Maybe two. How often do you, how, what's the periodic, tell me, tell me out somebody. How often are you paid at your job? Once a week, once a month, twice a week? Are you with me? What about having the ability to get paid 10 times a month? No. If you don't like 10 times, they send you, you know, eight times too many than you used to, just send the money back. That ain't gonna never happen. I remember one time AT&T sent me a check for $2.15. It probably cost me more gas to take it to the bank and cash it than, than it was worth. But what did I do? <laughs> Send that back to my, anything that comes to my mailbox with my name on it is getting gas. If you like that, raise your hand. <laughs> so let's talk about mailbox money here for a second, right? I only have time to talk about three ways, right? Now, when this thing becomes common knowledge, guys, the money will be gone already. Now, are we clear on it? Mm -hmm. So while nobody knows about it, we got to get it. Dead serious. That's what I'm going to talk about in training. In training, it's going to be a, a version of training that you've never seen Barry Bird do before. Because this is that version where I'm just straight laser beam focused. I ain't got no time to be sitting around, you know, 
I was asking and all this kind of stuff. I'm, you know, I don't want to be rude, but I'm just being honest with you guys. I see this thing clear. We, we're in a hurry to get this thing situated for, for our families, right? Because all this stuff that they were talking about with Jasmine, that she, you know, she may not never get married, and she may not ever have children, and she may not ever have a job. My daughter is the recipient of my residual income right now. There's more money in that residual check than she would probably have made in a year. Are you with me? Because I was trying to save her life, and it turned into the thing that's going to take care of her the rest of her life. And so there's still people in this room sitting here scratching their head wondering if this thing is real. This thing is dead serious. Am I making any sense? Yes. So now, if you enroll somebody that gets started with, with the business building, with a business pack, right, guess what? As soon as you get enrolled, you get your business pack, you have the ability to retail all of this product. So I want you to imagine, can you just go here with me? I want you to imagine that you had a uh, lunch party. Like I did a lunch party with Cedric last night. I want you to imagine if we would have had that scanner there, people would have started getting scanned, and their true age was higher than their chronological age, and we said, we got something right over here to lower it. That stuff would have been gone before we left that doggone room. Yeah. Am I making any sense to anybody yes. here? So now once this happened, this product right here, right, your product is gone. Now, raise your hand if back in the day, it seemed like it only had legs on it. Raise your hand. Just get up and run out your house. Yes. Were you always yes. looking for that bottle, that last bottle that you thought you had? And you knew it was gone. Mm -hmm. well, everybody experienced that. It wasn't the fact that we couldn't sell it, it was the fact that what? We couldn't keep it. It wasn't making any sense. We didn't have no scanner. We had none of this kind of stuff. We just had people sharing their stories with people. Now we're sharing our stories and we're scanning you. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to help everybody in here. So if you sold all of your product, you would make not only your investment back, but you'd also have a little extra left over. Right? How often, or how long did it often take for you to get your money back when you open a business? They tell you what, about three to five years. Are you with me? What about three to five days? Right? Or in the case with this scanner, it may be three to five hours. Just come on now with some money. <laughs> Right. All right. So now somebody that was there whose true age was off the scale, come on, they tried on the scanner.